Well, why don't we uh, get things underway then? And uh, we've got a lot to cover today, so I'll do my best to cover the different material. Uh, we are focusing on the version 24.4, our version 4 release, uh, the version 4 update for the 24 platform. So this is expected to ship later this week. We just have to flip a few switches and tag a few things, and then it will go live. Uh, but we're looking forward to this coming out later. And uh, we think you will be too. We just want to kind of walk you through some of the changes and the improvements that you'll be able to enjoy. So we'll be talking about features that are in both Mylio Photos and Mylio Photos Plus. Remember, Mylio Photos Plus is our membership that gives you additional benefits, including the ability for all your devices to communicate in sync with each other, which is one of the main benefits that also allows for additional protection of your files. So as I said, this is a release that is coming soon. Uh, it is all done. It has been approved by the Android store. It's uh, the Google Play store. It's been approved by the App Store. So we just have to do a few backend things and then we'll flip the switches and make it live, hopefully later this week. My name is Rich Harrington. I am a member of the Mylia Photos product team. I work to design a lot of the features and improvements that get added to the product, as well as to track customer input and work with our developers and our designers to create a better product. So we have a lot to cover today. Uh, the main things to get out of the way first is remember, Mylio Photos is our free version. If you have not added a subscription, then you get the benefit of searching on a single device and it makes it fast and easy to enjoy. It is going to go ahead and get your pictures more organized, but it works only on one device. Most folks choose to step up to Mylio Photos Plus the benefit of Mylia Photos Plus is that it extends the capability of your Mylia Photos library across all your devices. For example, in my household, I have a Mac, a PC, a desktop computer. My family has a few phones and tablets. All of those can be kept in sync so we can browse and enjoy photos and videos and documents. And with features like Spaces, it's possible to configure each device to show only a subset of that to make it easier for others to enjoy if you have other family members. This is a complete solution and it works with or without the cloud. The devices are able to talk to each other directly. And with our Space Saver technology, Mylio Photos Plus makes it really easy to optimize your images for portable devices. For example, I've been taking pictures for most of my life and I've got about half a million photos that conveniently fit on my phone or my tablet which means that I don't have to leave my photo library behind and I'm not lugging a bunch of portable hard drives with me. All right, let's jump right in then. And uh, if you are interested in trying out Mylio Photos Plus, it is available as a 30-day trial. You can activate that within the app or if you go to our website, you can also start a trial there. And this gives you all the benefits of allowing you to collect, to connect your devices, to go ahead and add additional collaborators, to find your content and adds protection ability for things like vaults and device to device syncing. It is $12.99 a month or $119 for the year. Okay. Also, I just wanna mention, you might've noticed JC in the chat pod, we have a session later this week, all about getting photos prepped for scanning and then what you can do with them afterwards. So you might wanna consider signing up for this event if you have archival photos. I can tell you I've been scanning in more pictures myself this week. I've been scanning in a bunch of slides and negatives, hence this box. <laughs> so I've been digging through lots of things and uh, it's always good to hear new strategies on how to organize those old family memories and preserve that data for future generations. Okay, Lori, are there any key questions or anything JC to cover before we jump into our first feature set? Not yet. Okay. Great. Well, let's go ahead then and we'll go in. We're talking about what's new and improved with version 24. And this is update four. So this is our fourth update to Mylio Photos. One of the things that I'm really glad we now have is we have made improvements with keywords. So this is something we've been wanting to do for a while. And I know for a lot of you who use keywords to organize, this will really come in handy. So you can use keywords as quick filters now, and it also gives you an alphabetized tree to make things a lot easier to find. 
So we can do this right in the quick filter panel, which is available on all of our main views. And you can combine quick filters together. So you can use keywords with other properties like time ranges or file types to really quickly narrow things down. So for example, let's say that I'm going to go into my library here and I'm gonna navigate over to folder view and I wanna go into my time-lapse library. Well, one thing I like to point out is if you have a bunch of folders, you can temporarily flatten them by choosing show media and it will flatten all your folders down and show you the contents. Now I'm gonna open up the quick filter panel here and start to type. So I'm just gonna type in a word to narrow things a bit. And as I start to type, you'll see that it starts to find matches. So notice here, as it starts to suggest things that are going to match what I am typing in. So this makes it really easy to start to get auto matching. And you can see that the keywords were quickly loaded. That's pretty cool. So this is useful here because as you start to add things, you will see that it updates and the keywords are now available to be seen, which is pretty cool. Let's go over to the all photos view for a moment and I'll just start to type and I will add in a keyword. In this case, I'm gonna do mail. And with just a click across all of my results, it narrowed it down and found files that had the keyword mail in it, which is pretty cool. Remember, you can pin that and then you can start to add other properties. For example, maybe you want to add a date range or other things. Also, by the way, if you press the backslash key, the filter tree now quickly collapses, making it a lot easier to navigate, which is pretty cool. So you do have your by keyword filters. They are alphabetical, making them easy to browse and you can find them in here. And if you have international characters, like some stock photos do, or if you're multilingual, those will also appear. Additionally, if you need to add keywords, remember you can do it over here on the right. You can go ahead and edit the keyword fields over there. And we will be working on some additional keyword improvements into next year to expand the capabilities over here on the right. So that is our keyword filter. And the keywords also make the move to the search tool. So now if you start to type a word up here, you will see that it begins to not only find matches, but also auto suggest, which is very cool. And now when you do a search, files that had the keyword diving also showed up as well as folders, OCR text, event names, or other things, making it easy to discover things. So we now have the ability to use keywords inside of our quick filter panel, as well as our dynamic search tool, making it easier to locate things, which is great. And remember, if you wanna get an overview of your keywords, you can jump on into your library stats section and take a look at keywords, and you'll see an overview of all the keywords used in your library, and you'll get a numerical ranking of those as well. So that will go ahead and populate that out. All right, we talked about the keyword quick filters. They're quite useful. And the ability to use keywords inside of dynamic search. So we think that this will be quite helpful for those of you who rely upon keywords as a strategy to keep things organized a bit. Remember, you just start to type and it will auto suggest things that match in the drop down list. Okay. I'd like to go on and talk about some improvements we made with Mylio Drive, as well as another option called Mylio Drive Plus. So Mylio Drive is an existing benefit to anyone with a Mylio Photos Plus subscription. And it's a really easy way to keep your devices in sync and to provide a convenient way to access all of the photos in your library, even from devices that don't have a lot of space. So even though I have a pretty big phone, it doesn't have an 11 terabyte hard drive. That's the size of my photo library. There's no way it's fitting on here or that I'm ever gonna pay for that much storage on a phone, even if it did. But what's really cool is with the optimized images, I can access my entire photo library whenever I need to. So Mylio Drive is included with every Mylio Photos Plus plan. 
and it gives you unlimited storage of optimized images at no additional cost. Now, this isn't new, but we hit it before when it was in sort of a slow rollout release. We wanted to make sure that it worked well for everybody. We didn't want to push it on people, but now we've made it much easier to activate and find. You'll find Mylio Drive available in the devices panel, as well as after onboarding or when you get started. So if you don't have Mylio Drive added yet, you could just go into your devices panel. There's those keywords, by the way. And when you click on the add, if you didn't have it already, Mylio Drive would appear right here in the add devices list. And you can add that to your library and get it set up. So once you do that, you also will see that you now have controls over what syncs. So if you don't want to put everything on there for the optimized images, you can actually adjust that or use a preset to make it a little bit easier. So that's going to make it convenient to have your photos with you on the go. Again, Mylio Drive is included with your Mylio Photos Plus plan, and it stores optimized images, which are typically about one-tenth the size of a RAW file, but they're fully editable, they're a five by seven inch print resolution, and they're everything you need for most everyday printing needs or social media, putting on a presentation, et cetera. Also, it will help speed up keeping your devices in sync, and it's much faster than downloading full quality files from most cloud providers. Now, let's go on and talk about the new option here, and that is Mylio Drive Plus and Secure Cloud. Uh, I see some questions about encryption and such. Here's what I will say. Uh, currently, the encryption is stored securely and only your devices can log in and access it, and you're notified if any device logs in. We are working on an additional option that will ship shortly, where if you want to keep a recovery key locally for an additional level of protection, you can add that extra security so that you have a recovery key that locks your account and has to be entered when you go to log in. And so that'll be an additional round of protection we're gonna be adding, Jade. Okay, great. All right, let's see here. And Robin says, do I have 11 terabytes of photos on my other drive? No, I do not have 11 terabytes of photos on my other drive. I have optimized images and those optimized images take up about 400 gigabytes of space and that's included at no extra charge in my Mylio Photos Plus membership. So we give everyone free optimized images with their Mylio Photos Plus membership, okay? All right, so if you have the app right now, you have the regular Mylio Drive, okay? Mylio Drive Plus is a new option that is coming, and we also now have a plan called Secure Cloud, which you are welcome to add, okay? Um, I'm see real quick question here. Is there an indication like this to show hierarchy and keywords? Harold, not yet. We don't have hierarchical keywords yet, but uh, that is something we are aware of for the future. If you guys want to clear that question out. Uh, when will keywords be viewable in alphabetical order? Right now, David, I showed you that in the quick filter panel. They are viewable in alphabetical order today. So either your question was impatient or I went too fast but there's my quick filters and there's my keywords and there they are in alphabetical order. And if I start typing, they also start to match and are served up in with the results there for easier browsing. So there's auto matching uh, based on partial match. Okay. So I hope that helps. Okay. All right. Back to Mylio Drive Plus. So Mylio Drive Plus is an additional option if you would like to add it. It is 100% optional. You do not need to enable it, but it is an additional charge. And I'll talk about what the options are here in a moment. We have partnered with Backblaze to host the files. And so it is using the Backblaze servers, which are widely known for both their quality and security. And they've won many industry awards and they're also very fast servers. Uh, all the files are encrypted and only devices that are signed into your account are able to access them. You are also notified anytime a new device attempts to sign into your account and you have to approve that sign in. So without it, they can't get in. So this is a great way for protection. Uh, we also now have precision syncing. 
So one of our staff members describes it as a reverse cloud, meaning instead of putting everything in the cloud, you can decide exactly what you want to put up there. And so you can control your cost as well as your access. So I have some work files I don't want to store in the cloud, so I don't. I also don't want to store most of my video files. They're quite large and I've got those backed up another way. But I do want my pictures backed up, but I can limit it to just the four stars or five stars, for example. So this way you can narrow your cost down. Additionally, every file that's written to Milio Drive is verified on upload to ensure that all data is transferred and only the devices authorized can access it. This is gonna provide you a layer of offsite protection so that if your house was damaged or where you were traveling, your devices were stolen, you would have a sync point that you can restore from. It also is very easy to control costs thanks to that precision syncing. And we have found in our test, as well as in talking to Backblaze, that their servers are fairly unthrottled. So they typically offer speeds that are often twice as fast as most other cloud providers. And we ensure that the data is yours. We don't sell it. We don't use it. It's not used for AI training. We don't advertise to you. We have a zero creepiness policy when it comes. Now, why do we do this? Well, quite honestly, it was up to you. If you want to store here, you're welcome to. We think it's a great option. And we wanted a better option to make it easy for people to have a seamless flow. So we feel that this is priced comparably. For example, if you go to get a terabyte of Google, it's a little bit less. If you go to buy one terabyte of OneDrive, it's more. So we're in the middle and we have a nice layer of security. We also have an unlimited cap. So if you do have a large library, you can go as high as you need to for storage. All right, I'm gonna show you how to access this. And when you are ready to enable it, you can go to your devices. And if you're getting set up for the first time, you can click add and choose Milio Drive Plus. It will then let you go to our website where you can choose a plan. You can start with two terabytes or go to five terabytes, or add it in five terabyte buckets as needed. The default option is to bill on a monthly basis, but there is annual billing available if that's how you prefer. And then you'll be able to precisely see how your storage is used. You'll see an actual storage tab here, and you'll be able to tell what's happening uh, as you start to go in. Now, I've not activated mine because we're turning it on publicly later this week. So I just wanted you to see the process. You can choose exactly what syncs, and you can use the sync collections, which we're gonna go into more in a moment. So you can have very precise syncing of what you're storing up there. Okay, I see a few questions, so let's tackle some of these. Uh, Don, Dropbox is a different type of storage. Dropbox is primarily meant for files, not for uh, speed syncing. It also is a type that is used uh, for sharing. Uh, ours is not a sharing server at this time. We do have some plans to add sharing capabilities in the future, but I think you'll find that it's faster and it works really well as a backup source but I invite you to go ahead and try out uh, Milio Photo, the Milio Drive normal version uh, with your Milio Photos Plus membership to see if you like it. And then you can actually sign up for a month of the two terabyte if you'd like to try it out and see if you find the speed and performance to your liking. Okay. Um, Buck is asking about a USB-C drive to an Android. Um, so our Android devices, that's a different question. That requires a different set of storage protocols than Android is currently supporting with our platform. We are starting to implement a newer set of Android storage protocols, but I'm not sure if that's gonna give us USB-C yet or not. Uh, but Buck, that is tied to the Android operating system and what we're allowed to do as a developer. Uh, Rob, if you're already on Blackblaze, you cannot switch your account over. Um, that is uh, an that is your account that you set up with them. So you'd have to either go through us or not, but we can't acquire or merge your data into our bucket. Okay. Uh, we'll talk, Buck, more about other ones. Um, you're getting a bit off topic on us here, but do not just copy one vault to another. Each vault has a unique ID and a setup number, and it's a managed device. Cloning it is not a way to make another vault. 
Uh, with that said, you are always welcome to clone drives for backup or to do other backup methods. And perhaps JC can share a link to some of the recorded webinars or sessions that we have. And we have extensive video training on backup. We're only going into new features today. So that's where we're taking a look at, okay? Um, nothing replaces the need for vaults, Jade. You can use this as a vault, but you should always have two vaults because it's not backup if you don't have two. Okay, so this is a great way to have an offsite vault. So it can replace the need for you to physically carry a vault or plug one in at the office if you're allowed to do so. Offsite backup is an important option for remote files and storage. Okay, all right. Uh, if you've already got something set up and you're happy with it, then you should stay put, Steve. But if you want to try ours out, you are welcome to. Okay. Um, Philip will be releasing a page a little bit more, but uh, there's your at. Uh, we do not support a second S3 provider yet, Philip. That's something we're looking at right now. You're only allowed to add one S3 device under cloud service. So once you have one, like I've done here, you can't add a second, but uh, secure cloud does not count as one of those storage methods. Okay. Additionally, uh, you're not going to encounter any caps. And so you can add as much storage as you need here. And remember, the optimized images do not count towards your storage usage. So those continue to be free. This is just for original files. So you can have original photos, videos, or documents up there at full quality, which does provide a great method for offsite backup. Okay. Uh, we'll take more questions on that in the panel. We'll also be releasing a dedicated web page here soon. Uh, Buck, I guarantee you it's better performance than OneDrive, uh, unless you live in Microsoft's backyard. Also, OneDrive caps out at two terabytes and it costs $10 a terabyte. So I'm pretty sure we can beat that. <laughs> okay. So feel free to take a look. Okay, cool. Um, uh, Sherry, what we said is the updates are expected to go live this week. I don't have an exact date or time. And if I say one, I will be secretly tasered by our engineering department because you're not allowed to promise things before it ships. That was a slight joke, but only this much. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about the quick filter panel. Some nice improvements here. So we have made the quick filter panel now support navigation, which is a lot of fun and uh, a couple more options. So first up in the quick filter panel, there is an option at the top to speed things up. It's here and you've got the ability to turn off the ones you don't want. So if there's a certain quick filter you don't wanna see, you can disable them and just hit the checkbox. We also have a new option called solo mode. So one of the things I like is if I press the slash key right above the return key on the US keyboard, it closes the tree now, which is nice. I'll clear that out. And now I can start typing to match. So if I start to type and I say, you know what, let's do smart tags dog. I can right click on that and I can pin that filter if I want to stack it. And then maybe I'm looking for something else like a specific breed or maybe a time location. Well, I can start to type. So I can say 2024 and notice how it has a stamp here. Okay, just pictures from the year 2024 to narrow that down a bit. And now I'm able to start to isolate that and get it a little bit tinier to find just the results that I want. What's really cool here is as you start to type, or even if you don't type, watch this. I can press the down arrow key and move through the tree. The right arrow key opens something, and you can keep stepping in to find what you have within a particular category. If you press the left arrow key, it will close and keep jumping you back up, making it really easy here to navigate. So for those of you who've been asking for keyboard navigation, you now have it. And you can use your up and down and left and right arrows to quickly navigate through there, as well as if you start to type, to use the up and down arrows to scroll through the results, okay? So that works really nicely. So you can quickly find things and jump through. Um, there is not a keyboard shortcut for pin right now. You have to click on the pin. This isn't search, this is filter. So I'm not sure if you mean search anonymous attendee or if you mean pin, <laughs> but you can do that by uh, clicking on the pin icon like that if you want to pin something, okay? 
or you can long press or right click to choose include, exclude, remove, pin, et cetera. Okay. All right. So the quick filter changes there that we mentioned, solo mode, close all is the backslash key. Just don't have the type field there. Keyboard navigation. And you can now stack the file type quick filters. So you can search for photos and videos, or you can say that you're looking for certain types of file formats and you can combine them because they now use the or logic. So if I wanted to find Sony RAW files or Fujifilm RAW files, I could pin both of those file type quick filters to narrow things down a little bit. Okay, cool. Uh, Lisa, you can filter by color. Uh, if that's your question, we don't have all colors, but I certainly use that all the time. So for example, uh, the other day I did sky to find pictures that had sky in it. And then I just typed in orange and picked the color orange. And you can actually adjust the intensity of that. We offer a slider here on all of our quick filters that use AI. So you can adjust how many matches you get and the sensitivity. So you can pin multiple criteria and it just calculates here. It can take a few seconds. I'm in the middle of a sink, but in my case, it's going through half a million photos and it will pop those results up here in just a second. Let's see, dynamic search. So dynamic search also gets some improvements, which is nice. I mentioned earlier that you can have your keywords in there when you search, but you also now will see your last 20 searches without having to save them in any way. We store the last 20 searches up there. We also do autocomplete to make suggestions as you're doing the search itself. By the way, there was sky plus orange. Let's go ahead and pin that. And let's go with bright. And so it can combine those into a recipe and narrow things down to find matches. In this case, sky and orange so that I can find good results with taking it across my whole library. All right, over to search for a moment. Uh, if you click, it's gonna show you your last 20 searches. If you choose it, it will load that search up right away. And remember when you search, it looks through things like keywords, smart tags, titles, descriptions. It looks for places and GPS tags. It can actually read the text that it seems to itself. So that's pretty cool. Uh, additionally, you can multi-select now as well. If you wanted to invoke a share or a copy, or maybe you want to add those pictures down there in the clipboard, I can click add and store those down there in a quick album ready to use. So you've got that ability to use dynamic search. Now I want to explain the way that this works. And I think it'll make sense if I give you an analogy. So I like to say that this is kind of like shopping on amazon.com, okay? So if you were to go and try to find something, dynamic search is like a global search or a Google search, or for that matter, for those of you who shop on Amazon, global search. So maybe I'm looking for something in particular. I'm a good nerd after all, so I'll search for Star Wars. And now very quickly, I get a bunch of results, more than 20,000 in fact, which is still too many for me to process in my brain. Well, what I can then do is filter those results. That's what we have here. I can go by a department and say, you know what? I'm looking for toys and games. And it narrows it down a bit by applying a filter to show me that category. Well, that's just like dynamic search and filters. And then if I'm still trying to find something on the page and I'm just feeling like I'm struggling, if I just start to type in a word here like monopoly, it can take me right there. It found it on the page. That's fine. Well, Mylio Photos has all three of those tools. So remember, you use dynamic search when you're not exactly sure what you're looking for. Then what you can do once you think you found it is open up one of the results. That'll take you to it and it will load it. Remember, with just a click, you could see everything from that folder or everything from that day. Clicking here took me to that day very quickly, and that worked pretty well. If I start to type or I'm doing searching for things, you know, it will actually look through that content, looking at file names and things like that. But maybe 
I want to see the week, right? See how simple that is? You can start to navigate. Or maybe you're looking at something and you don't want to see it in all photos view. You want to pivot to the folder. Well, that works well. And maybe what I want here is to mark out the pictures that aren't in focus, for example. So I can come down here to the smart tags and go to visual properties and just say, mark the ones that are blurry. And it's going to go ahead and filter on the blurriness ones. And I could adjust the slider for more or less matches. And then remember, you can flip that and invert it as well if you need to. So this is going to allow you to include or exclude a pill to make it easier to find what you want. So here I hid the photos that weren't the sharpest. Now that works well, but maybe you want to find something particular within. Well, then you can press Command F. And what that's going to do is let you look within those results, right? So this way I can start to search for something. And when I press return, it's going to go through and find it or find the matches. See? So that actually found one that I had tagged with face, where there was a face visible. And I can move between them like such. Or press Command A to select them all. Or if you're not on a keyboard, you can do this another way. For example, if I'm searching here for something, and maybe I'm just trying to find uh, pictures of a cat. There we go. It found them. See? And I can navigate between. And if I click on the number here, it's going to create a selection of all of those. And now you can add them to the clipboard or click the share menu or use the move command. Okay. So you can go ahead and use the find tool to find things within. Okay. Uh, Charlotte, we have tons of stuff here on our tools, but this is all under smart tag. So either you start to type and you'll locate things or you'll see options here for different types. So I could search by time of day, for example, if I just wanted to find pictures from the afternoon, then it's going to filter my library to only afternoon content. So you can actually sort or by day of week. So there's lots of things here in the quick filter tree. I'm only focusing on what's new and what's changed in this webinar. We do have extensive training and Lori, if you can share the links to some of the Ready, Set, Go, as well as the uh, Essential Getting Started series that has details on how to use search and filter, that would be helpful, okay? Cool. Um, Yolanda, keywords. My files have some. Some are ones that I've added. Some are ones from stock. And I've also used other keywording services like AI analysis tools that add keywords. There's many ways to do it, but uh, we will expand our keyword capabilities as we go forward. But a little tip, if you didn't know, let's say uh, you've used smart tags like so. Anything that is a smart tag is AI suggesting what it thinks it is. It's an AI analysis that runs privately on your own devices. No data is transferred to our servers. Nothing goes off site. It works without an internet connection, in fact. We built an AI that you run locally that doesn't send data back somewhere. So here, it came back and said, hey, this is an animal. I can say, yes, it is. Click the checkbox. It's a cat. Cool. And I don't need to search on color or exposure, or, but I will do properly exposed. Well, what I just did there was I promoted a smart tag to an actual keyword by just clicking the checkbox. It still works as a smart tag. You'll still be able to filter on it with other smart tags, but you can promote a smart tag to a keyword with just a click. So building, yep. Sky, yep. And so you can go through and it is a place, check. And you can go through and click the checkbox to promote those to keywords, which is an easy way to get more keywords. Okay, cool. Uh, Buck, Milio will not work with your Creative Cloud Storage. Also, Creative Cloud Storage is the same price as Microsoft Storage at 999 
but uh, a terabyte. So you might consider um, keeping things local. We do have a thing that I'll mention later about Frame.io integration. Uh, and some Adobe tools are starting to support that for collaboration, but uh, we do not support Adobe's storage platform. Uh, it's also a fairly expensive platform. Okay. All right. Let's keep going forward. So I mentioned Find. Find is a great way for you to find just what you want. If you don't have the Find tool available, all you have to do is press Command or Control F. Remember, the Find tool is available in most of our views. So if you are on the map, you can start to find a location. And it will quickly navigate. In this case, I went to Berlin, right? Maybe you are in the person container and I want to find my relatives. Well, now I can quickly navigate between those results or click the number 12 to select them all. If I wanted to do a batch modify or publish an album, for example. So you can use the find command there. Find works for albums. It works in folders. So you can actually navigate into folders to find things more quickly, which is pretty cool. And it will work in the all photos view or in um, a handful of others. Also works in search. So you can use those to invoke different finds. So in order to use this, uh, you just press Command or Control F, or you can go under the three dots more menu. Now you'll see a count of how many things match that. So you'll see the number of positive hits as the second number, and you can navigate between them. And you can also select all of those if you want to move them or modify their keywords or maybe make an adjustment or a bulk edit or a share. You can do all of that with the multi-select that Find now supports, which is pretty cool. All right, categories. So this is a big one. We've had categories for a while. Uh, one of the things I want to mention is that you have the ability to categorize things in Milio Photos to make it easier to find things. So we've supported categories at a folder level for some time. For example, I click and said, this was family, right? I labeled this folder as work. Well, that works with our default spaces. So you can switch between things like personal photos, work photos, public photos, family history, family, et cetera. So you can narrow down and filter your view. You can also use those categories to control what pictures are gonna be shown on other devices. But now we've added a great change. So when you go to import now and you select a folder, and let's say you decide to copy them or move them or link them, copy will copy them into your destination hard drive, move them will copy them to your destination hard drive and erase them in the original location. And link them is if you already have them on a hard drive and you just wanna point Milio to look at an existing folder. All right, when you do this, you'll see here that you can assign categories on import. So you could choose from our default shortcut categories of personal, family, family history, work, private, or click custom. And custom is up to you. I've added several additional custom categories to help me with personal organization. So this way you can choose what you want on import and those will actually get assigned to it on import. And then when you copy the files in, it'll actually embed that into the metadata. Remember as well, you've got other advanced options down here, like the ability to add keywords on import. So earlier someone said, you have a lot of keywords. Yes, I add them when I import because it's often easy to say things like, I visited Denver. These photos are all Denver, comma, Colorado. And I could add information like that or the name of the trip or key things about it. So make sure you scroll here. There's all sorts of great options there at the bottom, but that category on import is a big one, making it easy for you to categorize things. And that's if you copy, if you move, if you import, if you add from social media, all of those now can have categories injected. And when you move the files around, the categories will stay attached, which is pretty cool. All right, 
JC, are there any uh, essential questions to tackle right now before I go forward? Uh, or Lori? Not, not really. Um, there was one more question about auto-completing for keywords, which I think mm -hmm. you've pretty much addressed that that's coming on an upcoming release. Yep, we'll have uh, we'll have improve if it's in the right panel. That'll come later, not now. Yep. Okay. The others are pretty specific. I can, I okay. can manage them and answer Perfect. them directly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and Lori will also share with you. For some of you who are newer, we do have a whole getting started in depth video series that is all broken up by chapters. Very searchable. I promise I talk a lot slower, as does JC and Angela. That's meant for getting started. This is just an overview of the key new things we're adding. So we go a little bit faster to fit it all in. Uh, we did make an improvement now when you go to delete. I consider it an improvement because it makes it clear that you are deleting things on all devices and that this can't be undone. Um, we've had this question pop up a lot on questions and forum and support, and people think they're just deleting on their phone, but not their main library. Remember, with Mylio Photos Plus, all your devices are connected into one unified library. So deletes are really deletes. Deletes are everywhere. So this is going to ask you to confirm when you go to make a delete. Now, if you are a power user and you are 100% certain and you are mad that we have added an extra box that you have to click on, shift delete bypasses the delete dialog, but it too deletes everywhere. So don't delete casually. Instead, remember, you can use the X key to mark a reject and it will dim the photo. Or if you have the switch flipped to hide rejected photos here, there we go, I turn off show rejected photos. Then as you reject, they're just hidden and will disappear from the grid view or the folder view. They're still there, they're just rejected. So instead of deleting things all the time, consider using the reject flag when you're considering things for delete. And then it's really easy to run a cleanup command later and bulk remove all the rejected files at once. And you can do that a folder at a time, okay? Cool. Uh, Yolanda, it does go into the trash can on a PC if you have an original on that PC. So you have an extra level of recovery, but you can't put it back into Mylio. There is no undo. You'd have to manually copy it in. If you are on a phone or that device hasn't synced to your PC or a tablet, it might actually be gone. So yes, there's some extra layers of OS protection there, but not great ones. So we just want you to be careful before you casually delete things, okay? All right. Uh, ben, if you have batched things in your library, yes, you can run a filter and then just go to the info panel and you know take a multi-select and just go to the category section and click plus and you can add whatever categories you want. So you can select folders of pictures at a time, you can do it at the folder level, you can do a search or a filter and multi-select and apply categories, it's up to you. So if you wanna, for example, select all the pictures of your kids and then tag them with a the family category, that makes it easier to locate them later when you wanna do a share or a view, okay? All right, hope that makes sense. Um, okay, sync collections. So one of the things people struggle with with Mylia Photos is to understand syncing. And I get it because normally you don't have to think about it if you've coming from a background of using uh, tools. So for example, if you're using the cloud, it just kind of handles it for you and you don't think about it. But on that cloud, you don't have a real folder structure. Things aren't perfectly preserved. It's just moved to a cloud. We choose to keep everything in a folder structure so it can be recovered if needed and can be rebuilt and reassembled that way. But here's the thing. Mylio Photos supports many types of files and it supports many qualities. You can have your full quality photo. You can have your optimized image. There's no way that my tablet can hold 11 terabytes of photos or my phone, but my tablet can fit all of my optimized images. So here's what we do. I'm gonna pick my Android phone here, for example. And normally what happens is you go under the device sync policy and you pick a preset. And these presets actually make sense for the most part. You can manage them and have custom ones. I have a lot more in here because I customize, but at the root, it's pretty basic. 
catalog only is just your catalog and thumbnails. That's about 1% the size of your total storage. No big deal. Perfect if you have a device that's really small, like a phone, and you just want to browse everything. A lot of times I'll use catalog only on phones and then pick specific folders to have at higher quality. If you want Milio Photos to dynamically update things, you can use Space Saver. And when you do, you just go in and on the phone or device, whatever device you're on, you'll see that there's an actual setting here that lets you adjust the storage. So you have to be on the device, but you can adjust the minimum free space. So if you were on your phone, you can do Space Saver and then adjust the throttle here to set how much space you want Mylia Photos to leave for other applications. So when I hear people say, Mylia Photos filled up my phone, the answer is no, you just didn't tell it how much space to use. So you just do that under the presets here. You just pick a preset and then adjust. Um, but we realize that this gets a little tricky. And then for those of you who have backup drives, those are your vaults where everything gets protected. Well, here's how this can be. So I have my phone set to Space Saver, but I want to be specific. I say, you know, on my phone, there's certain things I always want with me. So in my Milio photos, I have a folder called travel documents. And in this, are all my travel documents. Like next weekend, we're going to a timeshare for the holiday weekend. It's there. There's my car rental. There was my tickets. There's all these things I need. Oh, there's the ticket from the escape room. I put it here so I don't have to go flipping through my inbox trying to find attachments or things that I lost. I just put them on all my devices in a folder. I just print a PDF. When I'm on a screen, I just use the share menu and I share it to the Mylio inbox and then I move it to my travel docs folder. And because Milio does PDF, it's great. So what I can do now is on my phone, I can go into the originals tab and click add sync collection. Sync collections let you choose what you want to sync. Quite simply, it uses a scaled down version of the quick filter tree. So only the things that can control syncing are going to be listed. So for example, I can start to type in travel doc. There it is, by folder, click. I see all the files in that folder. Yep, that's what I want. But if my space is small, I can say, you know what? I don't wanna put all the things from the travel doc folder. How about I only do the ones from the year 2024 and not sync the old ones? Look, or you know what? Only August and July and June, because these things are still coming up. So I made a recipe here. And then I click done and I could say, oh, let's call that recent travel docs. Save. And then, oh, you know, I'm gonna go visit my dad and I have some pictures I wanna bring with me. So I'm gonna back them up to my phone. So I can go in and say by folder and I can pick my scans folder. And then I can also say category family history. And then I can click done and back those up to the phone. See, so you can make a custom recipe here. Maybe you only want certain file types or certain sizes or a range of dates like the last photos from the last 30 days, for example, see? So you can make whatever recipe you want here and it shows you exactly what that's gonna be. So we don't have all of the quick filters, but we have most of the ones that can be used for syncing. Keywords, folders, dates, file types, categories, and ratings. So maybe you only want your five-star pictures on that phone. Well, I can do that and hit done and say best photos. And now my phone has all of my five-star photos stored at best quality. Now, if you want to see what that looks like, you just click the eyeball and it loads it as a filter. If you want to edit it, you just click the edit button and it loads it and you can modify this. And if you change your mind, you can remove it as well. 
So these are really easy to build up buckets of recipes of what you want to store in your devices. Once you get it saved, if there's ones you like to use a lot, you can just come up here and save a preset. Like I have a preset for all of my laptops because I have two different laptops that are similar in size. So I just use one preset for laptops. Okay. So this works. Buck, please do not go into those folders and try to throw things away. Those files all have a purpose. That's preventing Milio from writing data. JC can weigh in here. But only bad things happen when you start going in manually to folders and try to modify those things. Okay. So they're there. I'm, I'm typing purpose. a specific answer. Yeah, I'm typing a specific answer, but the my log file just tells you that that folder has previously been linked so that you don't accidentally link it twice, thus creating duplicates. So yeah. don't touch them. Right. There's a reason you installed Mylio Photos and it was to manage your, manage your photos. Doing it at the desktop level or on a per device level usually leads to problems. Okay. Um, you can see how much, you can't see a total file count, um, but you can, as you start to apply them, you'll get an estimate on um, storage and you can kind of see uh, what that size is gonna look like. But I know what you're asking for, that's a good question. Um, we're not calculating it as you're building it, but we do give you some indications when you're on the device, how much storage you're using, so you can track that as you're working. Okay. Additionally, I want to point out that you also have another method of syncing. So if there's a particular folder you want, like, oh boy, I really want to make sure that I'm putting that travel docs folder in a few more places. What I can do then is with it selected, just come to the sync panel and I can say, oh, hmm, I also want that at original quality on my iPhone. And I want that at original quality on my iPad. So you can select a folder and click on the sync panel for a device and change the policy there as well. So there's lots of ways to control syncing, but sync collections is a really nice new addition that makes it much easier to understand what you're putting on a device. And you see that under the device sync policy. You just click and then you can build your own recipe and understand exactly what it is you're starting to sync, okay? And as you do that, you'll also start to see information about the file count and how many files you're starting to sync when you do, okay? All right, um, we talked about categories, we talked about the delete box, the learn panel. So when you launch Milio Photos now, by default, the learn panel will open because we would like people to use it more. But if that is something that you don't want, you still have control over when it opens. So normally the learn panel will open. It's something you can freely position or move around or to a second screen. And it contains the getting started training. So for example, for those of you who weren't sure how to use search or filter or find, we have a great video here about finding things with quick filters and smart tags, right? So you can go in and watch that. If you have a question, you can actually chat. And JC's team is here. You can actually, after asking your question, if the AI didn't answer it, you can request a live person. And in a moment, you'll get an answer. If it's after hours, you'll still get an answer. They'll respond to you. And the next time you launch Milio, you should have an answer in there. Um, you can go through the articles here. And so if you want to know more about search, for example, just type. And there, using dynamic search with just a click. Short instructions, link to the full-length in-depth article. You can find out about what's new. So we'll be updating this article for 24.4 here soon. And there's other help resources here, including that fundamentals course, which is that in-depth three-hour video training source. And for new folks, Lori runs twice a day uh, meetups on different topics under Ready, Set, Go to help you get up and running and know how to use the app. And even if you've been using the app for a while, you might want to check that out. So that's the learn panel. And by default, it's going to open when you launch. If you are a paid customer and you don't struggle at all with the app, then under the device appearance, you have a setting there called show learn panel at launch that you can disable. That's fine if you need to. It'll only open on critical things in the future, like new feature notes or a handful of things, like if you go to a new feature for the first time. So that'll control whether or not it opens to help you out a little bit there, okay? So feel free to take a look at that. 
Uh, let me keep going here and try to get done. Oh, big one, visual change, folders. So if you didn't notice, folders now look like folders. And we did that to make it clear that you're actually managing folders on your devices. Uh, we will have additional folder improvements in the future that we're working on, but you can see the count, how many subfolders you have. So it makes it really easy. Remember, if you want to flatten a folder, just say show media and it will flatten it. Or you can go back to show as a folder. This makes it really easy to quickly browse and find things. We also maybe categorize buttons easier to find. And if you are not, it wasn't the fault. And there would also be the tap to sync button next to that. So overall, the folders have been improved. If that is something that you don't like change, I understand that. You can go under device appearance and you can adjust the use folder icon switch. So Milio gives you plenty of controls to help. All right, speaking of folders, and we're almost wrapped up, uh, there is a folder that may occasionally appear in your library called temporary sync conflicts. Now, if that sounds scary, it's way less scary than the alternative. Right now, I don't have one, but earlier today, I had some temporary conflicts because I ended up needing to reinstall the app on the Android phone and the device was out of sync pretty badly. So for a while, it was trying to reconcile all the changes. Now, sometimes when that happens, your library looks like it burped or exploded temporarily. What happens is, is folders will float up to the top level while Milio Photos figures out what it needs to do with them. And then it starts moving them back into the right location based on the last changes and getting the catalog back in sync. However, when that happens, we've discovered that perfectly normal, sane people start to panic. And we understand that. So now what happens is instead of coming up to the top level, just on the device you're working on, you might see a folder labeled temporary sync conflicts. And if you open it up, there's instructions that says, leave it alone, please. And basically, just leave it alone. You can still browse in all photos view. You can look at your albums. The only view that's affected is folder view. But let the system finish syncing and getting all the devices back into sync, and it will normally reconcile those things without a problem. If there is a problem, then you can contact support, and they've got some things that they can do to help you, as well as some strategies. These types of problems tend to happen most often when multiple people are doing big changes to the same Milio Photos account at once, like your folder and someone else is working on the same folder on two different devices at the same time, or you do a big batch rename or a big move, or you made a big change on one device at the hard drive level, not inside of Milio, so it knew about it. Those type of changes can throw Milio for a loop while it gets everything back into sync. And that's what the temporary sync conflicts folder is for. So just let it do its thing. Um, if you've not checked it out, and I'm going to run a few minutes over, but uh, for those of you who are Adobe and who are asking about things, uh, you might have noticed that Adobe last week announced a camera to cloud integration with Lightroom. So when I'm shooting on my Fujifilm cameras or Panasonic cameras now have an option called camera to cloud. And other manufacturers are starting to support this. What happens is, is if you've added that, then you can actually pair your camera to a Wi-Fi network or your smartphone. And as you start to take pictures, uh, those pictures can be uploaded to a collaboration account called Frame.io. And the Lightroom team has released an update. If I can grab the window here, there we go. That allows you to actually connect that. So here's some of those pictures that I just pushed a button and transferred wirelessly uh, over my computer. Well, Milio Photos also has this integration. In fact, we've had it for a long time, but it will allow you to also collaborate better with your Adobe software. I'm not going to go into all of it, but you'll find under our online services that we can import from Frame.io storage, which allows you to grab things that you've linked up with your Lightroom account that way, or you can watch a project where you're collaborating with others and we support publishing versions. So for those of you that are getting curious about Frame.io and Camera to Cloud, and you're gonna keep hearing more and more about that as we go into Adobe Max this fall, uh, that is a great option to look at. Fujifilm was first to market with these features and Panasonic followed behind and Nikon is expected to be coming soon, uh, but it's a way to seamlessly transfer things from traditional cameras 
to your storage devices like you see here. So you can take a look at those Frame.io integrations if that's something you're interested in, or you work with tools like Adobe Lightroom or uh, Premiere or um, After Effects, for example. There's some Photoshop ones in the works, things like that. That is the new Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic, okay? All right, um, let me start to wrap things up. I've got a list of short usability improvements. Okay, so we have added the ability for you to choose to sync an individual file. So if there's a file you wanna sync on a device, you can click right here and change the sync policy for the device you're on. So you actually can see and change the sync policy for individual files now. We also have added uh, more controls when you go to create a new space. So if you didn't notice these before, I'll make a new space here. Let's do add, and I'm gonna call this one grandma. I can use a preset to make this a little bit easier. And I'm gonna say that she's a family history collaborator. I can assign a passcode to protect this so that she's not allowed to change. And uh, I'm just gonna assign one right here. And I can assign what collections she's allowed to use. So now when you go to add the collections, you'll see only the ones that work. So they have to be based on categories. So if you make a collection of categories and save it as a quick collection, you can choose those categories or use the preset ones here. Like I'd like her to have access also to family photos. And so this is the categories that she can see. And under permissions, you can decide what she's allowed to do. For example, she can add and modify, but not delete anything. And then you save that and you can assign that to her device and set those rules up. So we've done some additional improvements on spaces and we also fixed a little loophole for batch tagging and spaces, so it's supported. Um, we made some small updates to our metadata fields to make them IPTC compatible. We've improved waking up from sleep. I wish I could do that in real life. Um, we added, oh, let's see here. Um, image editing presets now support the levels tool. And we have some full screen buttons. So shift F will take the current image full screen. You could press it again to exit. That works for video as well. So you can use shift F to take anything to full screen mode and it goes in and out very cleanly. And a uh, couple other small things. Yep, yep. And so we'll have a blog post up uh, in the community in the forum later this week when we release. Um, it's right here. It is... Uh, almost 4,000 words long, so lots of detail with lots of links to the help manual as well that will be fully updated with new options uh, to tell you more about what's there and to help you dig in. Remember, if you are newer or there's things you saw today that you didn't realize were built into the app, please just open up the Learn panel and you can go check out the Milio Photos Fundamental course. You should also join our community. And if you have some areas that you're relatively new to the application, just join Ready, Set, Go. Those will take you into the respective areas of the community and make it really easy to jump in and learn about different topics and have live support as you do so. All right, um, when to use categories versus keywords. So categories are more global and they're more of like dividing things into drawers or a file cabinet, right? So I like to think of it as this is my t-shirt drawer for black t-shirts. This is my drawer for colorful t-shirts. I instantly know where to go. You use categories to control syncing as well as sharing. And you have a limit of, I believe, 64 categories total with the built-in ones and the others that you add yourself. So use them a little more broadly for key things in your life to make it easier to organize your content. Okay. Um, I'm not sure about functionality that your question for adding photos to albums, but we absolutely have albums. You can uh, access albums there. We have shared albums that you can publish to the web. 
You can do search or find or filter and then right click and say add to album. So that find tool is a really great way to find things you are looking for to drop into an album. So you'll need to be a little bit more specific about your question or I'll do my best here. Uh, so Margo, everything is always an update. Mylio Photos Plus is a subscription or a membership. So you always get the updates for free, the, as long as you have a paid membership. Uh, the only thing that costs additional is if you decide that you want to add Secure Cloud to your plan. And that's a way that you can have your own uh, secure place to store full quality files, which is great for backup to protect yourself against uh, a fire, a theft, a uh, flood, you know, any sort of disaster, power surge. You can put your most important photos off site and you can use the Mylio Drive, the normal version with your plan, just to improve how fast your devices sync and to make it easier to keep all your latest photos on your devices available for on demand. So it's a great way, but this is just a, that's the only thing that's extra if you decide you want to add it. But all the features I showed you today that had blue squares are included with the app and are there for you to use. So hopefully that uh, answers your question. Can keywords based on quick collections to create spaces? So um, you cannot make a space with keywords but you can take a group of keywords and then filter on those keywords and just tag the pictures with categories. So you can do it that way and you can convert that to something a little bit higher level. But currently our spaces are limited to categories because it's extremely performant and it's something that's very predictable that we can track. So as we are filtering by categories, it's very easy See how fast that is to just change what I'm seeing? That's why we have these because it makes it very performant to locate content and to sync that way. So categories are one of the fastest ways we have to filter a library. So that's why we use them for spaces and everything else. Because if I say, I just wanna see my five-star work photos, look how fast that was. Or just my family history photos. Let's clear out the five-star and we can embarrass myself. See, it is a very fast way to organize and quickly browse and find content. So categories run at the 64-bit level. I don't want to get too nerdy, but let's just say it's one of the fastest ways to search, filter, and find, as well as sync in Mylio Photos. So use those categories on import. You can use those categories on any folder to tap to categorize using the built-in ones or your custom list. You can use them in spaces. You can use them in syncing settings there by uh, choosing them from the sync collection. So they're quite useful. And I would really suggest you dig into those. And there's extensive coverage in the manual. Okay. Um, Buck, you're asking about sharing off of Mylio Photos Drive. Uh, we don't support direct sharing off of that. We do have shared albums, which have the ability for attaching photos and making them downloadable. And so if you select a single photo today and you want to share it, a uh, couple ways you can do that today is you can select that image and of course, click the share menu and choose from anything in here. One of those options is get shareable link. It'll timestamp it, or you can name it and hit continue. And when you hit go, it will publish that. And if you want it downloadable, you can make it downloadable and click share. And it will publish that album. It's a one image album, give you the link and you can now share that or publish it or give it to another person and they'll get just that photo. Uh, we are looking at expanding this in the future to connect to Secure Drive if you wanted to make higher quality photos available so that you can have full quality files or videos or other things up there for the download button. And so we're exploring other options of expanding this in the near future, but we keep our storage secure by not letting many people into it. That's one approach as one of the others that we do, but we don't tend to let you uh, give people direct links to your storage. Instead, we create this share method with a shareable link that's built into the app today. And uh, that works for photos today, but that'll get expanded in the future for more options as well. Okay, um, can't emphasize enough, Open up that learn panel and make sure you check out the fundamentals course. Ready, set, go for twice a day live get togethers to learn more about the product. If you have a question, 
uh, you can go ahead and jump right into the learn section here for help and search for things, or you can absolutely talk to a person. So you can ask a question here and get an answer. So um, how do I change my plan? Boom. It'll do a search. And in a moment, it'll come back with a suggested answer. And if not, you can add your email and it will respond and the real human will get back to you. Or at any time, you can actually ask for a team too. So you can do a search in here for a variety of topics. Sync Android. There you go. And so it will search through all the documentation, the help articles and everything else and should come back with some recommendations that you can then click on and engage with. And if it doesn't give you the answer you want, you're just one click away from a live human who will then try to understand what your problem is and give you some assistance as well. Well, thank you very much for coming out. Like I said, this is the 24.4 update. We expect it to ship later this week is the working plan. Uh, we will update and let you know very soon if there's any issues uh, to that, but you'll see a notice inside of the community and in the forum, or when you launch the app, it will let you know when the update is available. If you are one of the more incessant types, you can always choose check for updates and it will tell you whether or not. And the updated version that is expected to come is version quadruple seven. So it'll say 24.47777 is the build number. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming out. And uh, I hope you enjoy the new features and take advantage of getting your images in sync and protected. We'll also be sharing some extra information here soon. <laughs> Thank you guys.